I said, if you brought your Bibles with you, your iPad, your phone, have the scripture with us on our stream this morning, I want to go to Old Testament book of Ezekiel this morning, chapter 37. A very familiar passage of scripture we have heard before. Um, but I truly believe there's still power in the word of God. What do you say? Amen. And for also mighty time to go into our version from the word of God, I'm going to ask that we focus on verse number 11 in our recipe for this morning. And so we want to Zoom in on verse number 11 for our uh, money time and our encouragement this morning. And I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. You can follow along with me, your own translation. And here's what the word of God says, and then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. And we are indeed cut off. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And behold, they say our bones Ride up, and our hope is lost, and we are indeed cut off. I want to tag a, a title to talk. Okay, excuse me. Miles per hour, and 
And as we, we witnessed this storm, and as we watched this storm, it just sat there, they said, almost 24 hours at a Category 5. I want you to, 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 to recall that day, go back, and, 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 and I want you to just consider what those people in, in the Bahamas was doing. Things that they have built for years, and all of a sudden, in one day, it was gone. I, and as I was, I was watching, and, and I was listening, and, and I'm, I'm watching the tube, and, and just watching what, what the media is saying about this ferocious and this, this monstrous storm of how it just went in and destroyed the northern bomb. There was one lady that came across the, the TV and they was, they was asking her questions of, about, about how she felt and what the experience was like. And here is what she said, and I quote, she said, there is no hope. She said, families are destroyed. Homes are gone. And, and she said, all that we knew, all that we broke, she said, it is gone. And she said, I don't know how we're going to rebuild. She said, I don't know how we're going to recover. But she said, I can remember this. She said plainly to the lady, she said, but we don't have hope. And, and I said to myself, I said to myself then, if, if you don't have hope, you really don't have nothing. Right? And, and, and so and so and so now when I, so I, I consider this storm and I looked at this storm and I said to myself, you know what? Storms come in all different form and fashion. Storm doesn't only come in a hurricane or a tornado, or tornado, but storms come in all different kinds of form. Right? A storm can come in a memory. Some of us have a mental storm every now and again. Some of us have health storms. Come on, say amen. We have financial storms. So storms come in all kinds of forms. And I truly believe today that somebody is going through a storm. And, and the truth of the matter is, you, you may be feeling hopeless and helpless, and you're wondering where your help is coming from. But I got the news today because I truly believe as we walk through this text, this morning, I truly believe there is an answer that God wants to give to us. So what do we really do when our hope is gone? <coughs> As we consider our text before us, we find the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel is prophesying. God has called Ezekiel to speak to Israel. And we find Israel now, we find Israel seems to, to help me preach this God, to find themselves in a, in, in a place y'all that they've never been before. We, we find them in, in, in a place where, where they could not rescue themselves and, and they needed someone to come to their aid. And here we find God is, is sending Ezekiel now to, to talk with Israel, to speak with Israel, to, to prophesy to them because of their situation. And we find it here in Ezekiel 37 where the Bible says that, that God's hand was placed upon Ezekiel. And God's spirit was in Ezekiel. And what I like about this narrative and, and what it gives us, because we're always preaching about the dryness of the bones, but, but there is something here that I want us to consider this morning. Because God, watch this all, because what God is going to do, God is going to take Ezekiel, and God is going to put Ezekiel in the midst of the situation of Israel for Ezekiel to feel what is really going on. Right? I learned something. You cannot help anybody if you've never been through anything. Have I got a witness here? Right? We, 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 we can't really help anybody unless we've been through something. So watch this all. Ezekiel really cannot help Israel unless Ezekiel understands what Israel is going through. And so here in verse number 37, verse number 1, the Bible says, And the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out in the skirt of the Lord, and he set me down, watch this now, in the middle of the valley. Now, 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 Ezekiel is in a good place here. Because watch this, God's hand is up on Ezekiel. And God's spirit is with Ezekiel. But watch this, but Ezekiel is in the valley. 
So let me just say this, and this got me in my note, and I think God's forgiving me this, because sometimes, y'all watch this, we despise our values. Right? But, but, but watch this, if, if God is with us, and if God, his hand is upon us, and, and his spirit is in us, guess what, y'all? God, God is with us even in our valley experience. So the Bible says, even in the middle of the valley, God led him. And it was full of bones. And verse number two, and he led me among them, and behold, he said there was very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. So the picture that we are seeing here in Ezekiel 37, he's, he's painting a picture of Israel in a hopeless and a hapless situation. Israel cannot change themselves. Israel cannot help themselves. Israel can't do nothing for themselves. And so what God is telling Ezekiel, what God is trying to show the prophet, is that, he, that, that, that Israel is a, a dry thing. There's no help on the right side of them. There's no help on the left side of them. There's no help in the front of them. And there's no help behind them. They fought, they got, they had a bad situation. Now, anybody in here in a bad situation? This morning? Everywhere you turn, it just seems like doors are shaking in your face. Seems like you can't find relief. You can't find help. You just can't get over it, right? And so Israel, they, they, they are here, y'all. They, they find themselves in a bad situation. And God is sending the prophet to speak to them. God is telling Ezekiel now, God is showing Ezekiel rather the situation of Israel. And they are in a bad situation. Not only if Ezekiel is in the valley, but now Ezekiel is in the valley with nothing but dead bones. Now, 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 I, I, I cannot help but to be human. And I have to place myself in the text because I said to myself, if I was Ezekiel, walking in the back, and I'm looking around me, and I see them bones, how would I feel? Think about it for a moment. Because when you, what, what, what he's seeing is the residue of death. Seeing, saying that, that there used to be life, and all of a sudden life is gone. Right? And, and he's seen this situation as he's down in the valley. Not only if he just he he, he looking at this and he and he examining this, but Ezekiel is sitting there and all he's saying, I can see him in my mind saying to myself, what then happened to these people? Because if you study the history of Israel, every time they go to war, often time when they kill the enemy, you don't have time to bury people, so they just land there. Right? They just stay there and, and these bones just pile up. Which was representing there used to be life, and all of a sudden, we got death now. It's a dead and a dry situation. And, 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 and the truth of the matter is, y'all, that God asks Ezekiel a question that Ezekiel really could not answer. And I'm with Ezekiel on that because I probably wouldn't have answered that anyway, right? But I want you to see this, y'all, just for a moment. I'm, 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 I'm going to set up in a minute. But I just want you to see this. Ezekiel sees this situation. Not only does he see this situation, he understands, y'all, that it's a bad situation. There's hopelessness and helplessness all around him. And watch this now. God's hand is on Ezekiel. God's spirit is on Ezekiel. And God knows the situation that is going on with Israel. But yet God will ask Ezekiel a question. Ezekiel, can these bones live? Right? And, 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 and the question is, watch this, y'all. I'm with Ezekiel. I'm with him. Because oftentimes, the truth of the matter is, church, and I'll be honest this morning, the truth of the matter is, sometimes there's a situation in our own lives that seems to be hopeless and helpless. And, and the question is, man, can, can we get out of this or can we get through this? And, and the truth of the matter is, God already knows the answer. Right? But God wants to know where our faith is. He wants to know how much we trust Him. Do we got enough faith in Him to believe? Because when He asks Ezekiel the question, Ezekiel said, Hold up now, God. Hold up. Only you know this man. Only you know 
can these bones live uh, or not? And, and, and that was the right response, the right response that Ezekiel gave to God because Ezekiel knew that God knew the situation. God knew what was going on with Israel, just like God knows what's going on with your situation. But God will come to you and ask you, do you think you can get out of that thing? Do you think you can get over that thing? And, and sometimes the truth of the matter is you've been dealing with this thing for so long or, or whatever that pain is or whatever it is that we're going through. When the question comes, do you think you can get over that thing? Sometimes we have to back up and say, man, I don't see no way out. But I truly believe, I truly believe if we can respond back Ezekiel and say, God, only you know. And God tells Ezekiel in. He started to give Ezekiel the answer to the problem. He told Ezekiel, you need to prophesy to the bones. You need to speak over them. You need to speak the word of God over that situation. And, and emphasis today, can I just pause right here and say to you today that, that sometimes there some, that there's some dead situation in our lives that we cannot turn around. Right? There are some dead things that are going on around us. Right? Just even in our world, there's some, there's some dead and drop situation in our world. Have I got a witness here, right? That, that we seem like nothing is going to change, like nothing is going to turn around, like regardless of who's sitting in the right house, regardless of who's sitting in the seat of power, we just got some, some situations going on around us that seem irreversible that we cannot change them. But, but I'm reading as I read the word of God, just like God told Ezekiel, sometimes, y'all, if, if God's hand is upon us and if God's spirit is down in us, then, then God has given us enough to speak to our situation because he told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I need you to prophesy to the bones. He told Ezekiel, you got to speak to the bones because if you speak to the bones, not your word, but you speak my word. And when you speak my word, something happens when you speak God's word. And I've learned, y'all, there's power in the word of God. There, there is power in God's word. When, when we see situations that, that seem that we cannot handle it, and we put a little word on that thing, I learned that the word can change some things. The word can turn some things around, but, but we got to know the word of God, right? We got to have it down in us because God's hand was up on Ezekiel and God's spirit was down in Ezekiel. Ezekiel had the word of God in him. So when Ezekiel starts to talk to this situation, something happens. And I like this thing now. Because when it becomes personal, when the situation becomes personal, when we all get to that place in this journey, when we feel a little helpless and when we feel a little hopeless and when we feel like there's no life left in us, when, when we're trying to go on and we're wondering, God, what is this thing of a change in us? And, and if, if I got any witness in here today that know what it feels like to, to be without hope and, and don't know uh, uh, don't know where your next meal coming from or don't know how you will pay this bill or don't, don't know how you're going to get through this thing and, and you just find yourself just swimming and wondering, God, when will this thing change? And, and you find yourself in drop spots and you find yourself in a, in a hopeless spot and, and you're saying to yourself, God, I'm all dried up and nothing left in me. When I can't even pray, I can't even read the word of God, I, I can't even go on no more. Do I got a witness? Anybody have a breath just like just giving up and, and going in the tower when you just felt like you just tired? Going, you had nothing left in you to go on with, but, but then come the voice of God, and, and God starts to speak to you, and God starts to tap you on your shoulder, and God starts to remind you, son, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Something's swell up in you, and you get a little strength in you, and, and you start to feel something down on the inside of you, and you start to stand up and put your chest out down, and you start to walk as if nothing was never. Because there's something about the word of God. When you hear the word of God, the word of God changes. And some of you today, some of us are dried up. We are dried up. We hope we got no hope in, a situ in your situation. 
You're wondering what this thing is going to be. But just like this picture we found in Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel's situation, the Israel situation, it seems like nothing was going to change. And God told Ezekiel, Ezekiel prophesied to the Lord. You know, God knows how to speak to us, Sister Griffin. You can go on Instagram and there can be a, a text or somebody saying something. You can be having a bad day and that thing bless your spirit. Yeah. Um, so, somebody can shoot you a, a massive text out of it and they got something in there and you say, man, you know what? This thing was for me today. That thing touched me, right? God has a way of speaking to us. Right. God has a way of knocking that off. But God has a way of encouraging us, right? So we tell Ezekiel, Ezekiel, speak. Side to the Lord. Speak to the situation. Speak to the situation that is at hand. So what is the situation at hand? We already know. We got a valley of dry bones. There is no life. There is no hope. Right? There is no peace. They are wondering how in the world are this thing going to come back together. Just as we look at the church today. We ask ourselves the question, can this church ever live again? Right? Can the situation that we've been seeing for years, can it ever change? Right? Can, can this thing really change? Can we, can we really move from A to B? Right? And watch this. We've been looking at the situation for some time. And, and watch this, y'all. I truly believe. I truly believe. That if we use the word of God, I truly believe the word will change things. And in verse 11, and here it is, I'm going to take my seat. And then he says, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up. And our hope is lost. And we are indeed cut off. Ephesus, I truly believe today that somebody is driving. Somebody is feeling hopeless. And somebody feels cut off. But I got news for you today. What do you do when your hope? Is gone. Let me tell you what you need to do when your hope is gone. You got to trust God. You got to believe Him. You got to know that He will never leave you nor forsake you. You got to take Him at His word because He's a mighty, big God. He has never lost a case, so I got a witness here. He'll hold your hand through the desert places. He'll walk with you in your battle. So what do you do when, when your, your hope is gone? you got to trust this big God. Because God is able to restore us. God is able to give life back to us. God is able to, to give us hope again. God is able to, to, to rewrite your history. He's able to bring you through that thing. But you got to learn to trust Him. When you find yourself feeling dried up, when you find that your hope is on, and when you feel like you're cut off, you have to learn to trust God. Because what happened is this. God said, Ezekiel, I'm going to open up graves. The dead situation, God said, I'm going to raise it up again. God starts to, to show them that, that your situation, you can't do anything with it. But God wanted them to know that I can take your situation and, and I can turn that thing around. Because God wanted Israel to know that you're powerless. He wanted them to know that he has the power to change any situation. 
So what do you do when your hope is gone? You have to learn to trust him. You gotta learn to trust the Lord. Father, today we thank you for your word. The truth is, God, we we all have, has, have, have lost hope at one point in our own life. And God, we have seen you work. And God, I pray today for that person, that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that are here today that may feel like there is no hope in their situation. That may feel dried up and cut off. God, I pray that you will remind them that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Please, God, be with you. Keep them and keep us till we meet again. In the blessed name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Can you please stand at this time as we will receive our benediction? You will go with us and go before us. Keep us till we meet again. In the blessed name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. You may be seated. And we ask that you please follow the instruction of our ushers. And quickly, I want to remind the church that prayer meeting will resume this coming Wednesday. Uh, so we will have prayer meeting this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Amen.